are in a hotel room right now that is we're literally very, like very nice hotel. Made, like more than five star keep in mind we're we're in like an insane suite we are drinking gas station polar pop polar pops cheers, cheers. we moved on from a margarita and the reason we had technical difficulties whether you guys are watching on YouTube or you're listening right now, I have to out myself. My laptop is from 2013. She's 2013. So I'm the problem. And honestly, we look way better now. You look so much better. Like this yeah. happened. This was divine timing. Yeah. Okay. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. So when you have like shit that happens, like in life or in business, and I know it feels like it's terrible. Like, why is this fucking happening? I hate that this is happening. Yeah. You might not want to in the moment, but at some point it will be revealed why. why? It's but we kind of know that. So I go, I'm trusting actually. And some of you saw that who were like on the TikTok live. We were also on TikTok live, by the way, while recording this. I can't look there because now I think we're talking to the people of TikTok. And we're oh, not. And, oh, and so then you get confused. I, so you can. Yeah. But I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but the people of TikTok are here with us. What about, wait, what about the people who, um, like, listen to shit out of order? I know who you motherfuckers are. Yeah. You're the people who read, like, the last chapter of the book. <laughs> She's holding her hair up because she got a fresh, or her hair <laughs> got a fresh weave. And she's afraid to get it wet, so she's just, I'm watching her, she just keeps lifting it higher and higher. I mean, what, that was for sure my large intestine, and now the small. Which one comes first? Do you know? Small is closest to, to empty, so it goes large to small. Okay, so it's now hit the small. Yeah. So what about, what do we say to the people who... They're just those people. They maybe only have heard of you and your and your show. Her new show's coming out though. So it doesn't have a title yet. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll find out in part one. <laughs> no, no, no. You'll find out in the show notes of this what it's called. Yes. But I don't have a title yet. But it, it's in the show notes like now. It, when you read the show notes for the show, you'll know the title. And we'll link we link part two and vice versa. Yeah. My show's brought you me with Tiffany Carter. So we'll make sure it's like, you know what we mean. Yeah. So uh, I'm an asshole. I'm the problem. This is a great example also I of what saying. it costs you. Yeah. The cost of being, and this is not about me being cheap. No. Just so you know, because there's a big cost of being cheap. Okay. My pops was cheap. So, yeah. and I've, and I've been cheap before and it's cost me. It's not cheap. I have a brand new top, top of the line MacBook that I bought in November telling myself over the Christmas holiday, Tiffany would have it all transferred and like get used to it and like have a ceremony for, <laughs> for Mumford. For Mumford, yeah. Um, is, that what, is that the... That's Mumford. Okay. And he's been with me. I mean, think of this. Mumford's, been with me Mumford's made 13. me millions. Yeah. Your phones, you change. Which is also interesting because I think a lot of times people think they need to have the newest and the best tech mm -hmm. to like as an excuse or just like an excuse. But really, like you built like a multi bajillion dollar business on a laptop that's almost twelve years old. <laughs> <laughs> and when you say that it's so bad. And so I've not done it. I'm I'm sold on it now. Yeah. And this was further confirmation. This might be why it happened. The whole point is saying when you get frustrated when stuff happens. There's always a reason, even stupid shit, like there's the traffic lights out. Yeah. Even that, it might have slowed you down. It might have prevented you from getting in an accident later. It might have allowed you in time yeah. to end up having a chance meeting mm -hmm. or see something beautiful that you wouldn't have expected to see. Totally. And with this, I was like, this is happening for a reason. You can probably tell that maybe the audio doesn't sound as good, but I don't really think you guys care. This is raw and real. Especially because this, this is part two. I mean, for the love of God, if someone had a problem with the audio and you're already listening or watching this and we're in the bathtub, like, we probably aren't going to like either of our shows. No. Or us. No, we're not free. And guess what? <laughs> I don't think I'll like you. No. 
you know, mm-hmm. like if you don't appreciate this. No way. So both of our biggest fears have happened in business. Oh, yeah. Um, we have to get to this. You know, one of the things that you and I have talked about a lot is like we have a lot of fear about exposure. Like showing up and people seeing us. Being seen, absolutely. And every time you go to another level of growth as a digital marketer, it requires being seen by more people. That's just it. Like digital marketing is how can I connect with more people that I'm not seeing in person? Yeah, like qualified people. Yeah. Visibility is cash. Visi- like the more visible you can be, the more money you can make. It's a number. It's a number game, yeah. right? And one of our fears is like that, as we talked in episode one about the, when you go to the next level of ascension, you deal with bullshit at every level. One of the internal battles that we have is being seen yeah. at that next level. And we've both had experiences where we're scared. We go, we're moving to the next level. We're being seen more. And one of my fears has always been around my family. Like, my family's judgment of me, because one of the things I talk about a lot is that I have eight siblings and I'm from a family of drug addicts. It just is a fact. Like, I could go through and provide evidence yeah. of this. It's yeah. just true. And my siblings and I don't deny it. Right. But other members of my family don't like, I, I have always felt like they wouldn't like for me to talk about this publicly. Sure. Family secrets. Family secrets, right? And I don't have family secrets because I, my whole brand is about talking about my yeah. life and, and and that's your experience lived experience totally and you get to sh- share your story totally and so i was sharing with tiffany last night i put out this reel that we'll share in the show notes and it just really highlights who i am where i came from and in that it talks about the fact that i come from a family of a lot of trauma where there was religious oppression and addiction and so I posted on Well, she was like beating a drum or something. Yeah, I'm like doing and the background of the video is I'm I'm like guiding breath work and I have a Sarah the spiritual influencer hat on That's and I'm amazing. like I'm in the middle of a fucking vineyard in Napa guiding this group of seven figure female entrepreneurs through breath work. And I share it on Instagram and Facebook and I don't put a lot of energy into Facebook, but my content and Instagram shares it. So I don't I don't think about Facebook a lot. Yeah, same. And so this real shared and one of my aunts commented on it. And so I was out at dinner with friends and I opened up and I was just, I happened to just be scrolling through my notifications and I saw that one of my aunts commented on this video. And she went fucking in on me. She was like, you, like you didn't, because in the reel I said I retired from being a lawyer. And she wrote, you didn't retire from being a lawyer. You couldn't hack it. It's like, Wow. What? And then she tried to deny my experience about addiction in the family. And I just, I, and I don't remember all the things she said. It was, it was a full paragraph. I skimmed it. And then my immediate reaction was, I didn't even screenshot it to to keep it. I deleted it. And then I immediately went and blocked her and removed her as a follower. And all of my dad's siblings were all blocked and removed. Like everyone lost privileges. And I mean, that, that is, that is truly like, that's the fear that people you have that so many people have is I'm not going to be accepted. I'm not going to be loved. I'm going to be rejected. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, you know, hurt people. Yep. And then you end up hurting yourself because you never share your story, your truth, your gifts. Even yeah. I have people that like come to me who have these most beautiful gifts, like creatives or writers they have like secret journals and shit and no and no one in their family knows uh-huh. and what they really wanted to be is a writer but they're a doctor when it's like it's so sad to me yeah. but i get it yeah at the same time i mean it took me 10 years to do this podcast because of that yeah i i part of it was like who the hell's gonna listen to me but the other part was oof i'm gonna get like my mom's going to sue me. Yeah. Um, bad things are going to happen when we get seen. Totally. Totally. And you know what? When you're seen by more and more people and you're sharing your truth, people aren't going to like it. 
You yeah. haven't experienced it, you? Wait, before we get here, let's not skim over the fact of who the sister is. Oh, no, that was the aunt. So I had two I had two things happen. First one was my aunt commenting on another post. I posted a, a reel or a piece of content about soul contracts. And it was basically like this idea that like you choose your life before you come on the planet. You choose your family, you choose, choose your lessons. You have con- contractual relationships with yeah. people. That's a belief that I ascribe to. Not everybody does. It's something I believe. And I don't care if anybody else believes it. It's what I think. And my one of my sisters, and it's her and her husband, have a shared Facebook account. Uh, okay. So you never, you never know who's that, talking to you. I don't like it. That's not approved. No. I don't want a shared account. No. And somebody commented on it and went in on me about my views on soul contracts. And I looked at it and I laughed. And I literally said out loud, you don't get access to me anymore. And I blocked them, removed their comments, and that was it. But isn't this person someone that did something to someone else? So this is a sister who had a baby with my ex. So when Tiffany and I were talking about this, I was sharing with this with her the other night. I said to her, and I was one dirty martini in. We're one dirty martini in, and I said, "Did I?" T- I'm telling her about this piece of content, and I said, "Yeah, well, it's my sister that had a boy, a baby with my boyfriend," and she was like, "What?" And I was like, "I had a boyfriend that she had a baby with." She's like, "You never told me that story." I was like, <laughs> "Who remembers Jerry Springer?" This is some Jerry. This Springer is story. Jerry Springer, Mari Kovic. Yes. Yes. Kind of like, yes. stuff. And so this sister has always been on the grits in my life because she would help to raise me in her perfect family. The older siblings raised helped to raise the babies. And so she was like a second mother figure. But she was also the sister that always like had interesting resentments towards me in my life. Like she just made these like real like fucked up little comments. She's like, all right. And so then I had a boyfriend. Should I, tell, should, I, should I tell them the juice? Yes. Okay. So I'm from a very conservative Catholic. But you're also live on TikTok, by the way. Oh, I know. Okay. I have a very. <laughs> I forgot about TikTok for a second. So I have a very. I'm from a very conservative Catholic family, and I went to an all girls Catholic college prep school. My senior year of high school, there was a male religion teacher. He wasn't my religion teacher. He was a religion teacher in the school. <laughs> This is just going to sound worse and worse. Okay. I was 17 going on 18. He was 23, I think. And he was also a part of all of the young adult groups, like, in the area. And so... This is giving... <laughs> this is not giving... This is giving you know what. Okay, go on. So I started going to these young adult groups with my sister I was just talking about. And I got, I was, I got to know this guy a little bit. And then he got a job at my school. And so I would see him at school, and I would chat with him, and I was friendly with him. He was so cute. All the girls liked him. And then outside of school, I was getting to know him. Like, he'd come over for dinner, and he became a family friend. And then I realized I liked him. (laughs) (laughs) What's so fascinating, as she's telling me this story, I'm hearing it now for the second time only ever, It, it, my thought has not changed. No, I know. Okay. It's also crazy telling this story because it was so long ago and it's like such a different version of my, it's just like a different time of life, you know? And where do you think this story goes? I start having an inappropriate relationship with the religion teacher, <laughs> but no one knows. I can't tell anyone. I don't tell a soul, but my family knows because he was a family friend that I started dating and my mom didn't think there was anything wrong with it, but it was a secret. So I dated this man all of my senior year, undercover. Not even your best friends knew. Not even my best friends knew. No, but I, lock and key, didn't tell anyone. And so I go through my senior year secretly dating this guy. Then it's the summer after graduation. And now we are, like, free to be out in the open. But we're, like, discreet about it. We're, like, going to town. It's, like, an hour away to go to dinner. Like, we're we're not hanging out, like, close to home. And over the course of that summer... I was, like, pretty wise for a 17-year-old. 
I all of a sudden was like, I don't want to do this. Like, this doesn't feel good. Like, the way he started to act with me, it was very, it was strange. Yeah. Started to get, like, kind of controlling about things. And, like, especially when I was that age, like, I, you were not going to control me. If you told me to do something, I would do the opposite. And so I decided to go away to college. I was going to go to college at home. I found a school far away. I applied. I got in. I was going. The week before I went to college, this man proposed to me, asked me to marry him. And I... The religion teacher. The religion teacher. And I looked at the ring. He had a big, like, two or three dozen roses, and it was in the middle of the roses. And I I remember I pulled the ring out. I put it on my finger. I looked at it, and then I said, I can't marry you. And he was like, what do you mean? I said, I have to go away to college. Like, I can't marry you. Yeah. And then he was like, well, like, what if you go away and we try to have a long distance relationship? And I was like, I mean, maybe like, but I just knew I needed to get out of town. I was like, I've got to go. So I go away to college and I, this part's kind of blurry to me because I don't remember exactly how we broke up. Like, I remember I went away to college and, and I'm pretty sure he broke up with me when I went away to college. And then like three weeks later, I get a call from my favorite sister, the one who's the one right above me in age. And she said, listen. We got to fucking talk. We had a meeting. I have five sisters. She said, we had a meeting, three, her, two other sisters, and my mom. The sister who we started this whole story about, we commented on their reel, Sister M. She she was like, we got to talk. She's dating your ex-boyfriend. And I was like, the guy that I just broke up with three weeks ago? The guy that broke up with me three weeks ago? The guy that, the guy that just proposed The guy you. that just proposed to me? And she was like, yeah. Like, they're together. So I said, don't tell anyone I'm coming home. So I get on a flight, fly back to Jersey, and show up at this guy's house in the middle of the night. This is the kind of, this is the kind of, I, I was like a ballsy 17 year old. Yeah. And I really wanted to show up at his house to just like call him out about yeah, it. Yeah, of course. And to just be like, what the fuck are you doing? So I did that. I showed up in the middle of the night. He was obviously astounded to see me. And I confronted him and he had nothing to say. He just was like, we're in love. And. You know, it was the weirdest thing. So I'm devastated. I go back to college and I don't speak to this man. I think I'm never going to speak to this man for the rest of my life. And I'm de- my sister's dead to me. I'm at college my first year and I find out that my sister's pregnant. Wow. With said man's baby. I think it's a, the details are a little fuzzy. I think they moved in together and I think they got engaged. That's crazy. And the joke in my family was like, did he give me the same ring that he proposed to you with? Did he? Or we, I don't know because I never looked at it. And like my family was like so unavailable for her engagement. And then they eventually broke up. But she has a baby. So with like, him? Yeah. So her oldest child, my niece, is my ex-boyfriend's baby. And with your sister? With my sister. And what makes it even more fucked up is fast forward, I go to college, I go to law school. After law school, I have this, you know, my, this partner that I've lived with for years. We're at Christmas Eve with my family. And my sister was doing a kid trade for my niece on Christmas Eve. So my ex-boyfriend, the religion teacher, shows up at Christmas Eve and tries to holler at me at Christmas Eve while I'm there with my boyfriend. And he's just like, how are you? You look so great. I'm like, Ew. This is so weird. Ignore him, blow him off. Me and my boyfriend are party because it's so inappropriate slides into my dms the next day telling me how great i look and that i'm doing so many things no shit motherfucker i'm a lawyer yeah i'm doing good things unbelievable so i just blocked him and if you think about this to the point of like how you have to let go of that old life for your new one she had to let go of this guy because she didn't obviously know about the sister. No. But she had to let go of that guy in order to go to law school, even though she has now left, you know, you've left your law career. Yeah. You still had, you were supposed to have a law career. Yeah. That was part of the plan. All of this is part of the plan. But the problem is, is like, we hold on so tight. Like someone like me, I can still hold on for too long. I don't feel like you do that. No. I, I feel like, though. oh, you did it? More. Because, I mean, you didn't 
how okay did you feel like you held on too long to the sky no i didn't feel like i held on too long i don't yes. either and that's amazing to do that at that age especially and i start well and the thing that i've learned is like and this goes back to what we talked about in episode one if you haven't listened to episode one we talked about letting go of people when you're ascending to the next level sometimes we have to let go of people who it's people speaking. places things beliefs, yeah, beliefs and maybe all of it maybe, which is terrible maybe yeah. all of it and so this was an example at such a young age where i had to let go of the life i was living at home i had to go away to college i had to break up with a boyfriend i saw his true colors very quickly after breaking up with him and like i always whenever we talk about the sister i me and my other sister is always saying man thank god you didn't have a baby with that guy can you imagine that was and oh my god Right? That would be like next level. Oh my gosh, what if I had a baby with him and she had a baby with him? No. And they'd be like cousins with the same dad? Oh my god. Weird. That's so messy. And like then if she went back and repainted, what if that didn't happen? The whole thing. Like you guys have to go back in your mm-hmm. life. And I'm telling you, if you're like patient and still enough, you there are dots that it's like, okay, that was fucked up that that happened. Yeah. But that had to happen. I'm not saying there aren't things that happen along the way. They're just part of life. Totally. Like people, like my dad dying. Totally. Like I don't think like my dad dying was part of the plan and had to happen. Right. Like, like there's some, it is part of the plan. It's also just like part of life. But yeah. it's kind of like, I mean, much less crazy of a story than yours. But it's like me starting out as a TV newscaster. Yeah. There were no podcasts when I was a TV newscaster. No. That was not a thing. I mean, and I'm not a newscaster. You know, I went then to corporate. I wasn't a newscaster anymore. And then look what happened. Newscaster right. turned podcaster. I knew how, and content creator. Like right. I knew, I'm literally trained in creating content right. and like talking on camera. It's like, I couldn't have made this up. No. Right? Like I think that's also unintentional manifesting. Absolutely. I think about the same thing when I was a lawyer. What did I spend most of my time doing? Taking depositions, meeting with people, asking interviewing questions, people. interviewing people. Like, that was obviously supposed to be part of the plan. Yeah. Because now I interview people. As yeah, well. and like, you're not, you don't get, like, starstruck. Like, no. you don't get intimidated if it's someone who has, like, multiple PhDs, like, there's a lot of people that, that they get like, you know what I mean? Like fangirly or they get like awkward around that. People of people of so to speak power, you don't you're doesn't not based on it. Doesn't phase me. And I and I had to even have my career in corporate pharma, like yeah. medical, number one, because that's where my other business came from. Number two, that taught me I was constantly around very successful very smart, wealthy people. I was surrounded by abundance. Totally. Even though I know the dark side of that industry. But still, like the people I was around, these were all no one's a doctor and doesn't isn't a go-getter. Exactly. Exactly. Well it's also something that you this is content you talk about all the time. I can't remember exactly how you say it, but you talk about how we all have our secret sauce. Yeah. We all have our thing that like some people are just really fucking hot. Some so I people, call it the leg up. The leg up. Yeah. Some yeah. people are really well spoken. Some people have like advanced degrees that give them some that we all have. Or they're just like that empath personality that like is beautiful holding space yeah. for people. Yeah. 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 We all have it. And a lot of time, and not a lot of times, all the time, the decisions that we made through life form the secret sauce. The leg up. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you think your leg up is? I mean, you can have more than one thing. Okay. I think... Like, if we're talking, like, in, in business and wealth. One of my legs up is that I'm very comfortable being in front of people speaking. I think I speak well. I could, I could honestly have no idea what I'm going to talk about. And I can sound pretty credible. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I could make up a word and you would think it was a real word. Yeah. Well, you did. I did. Or, I think I did. <laughs> but I, I didn't... It was so good... That if it's not a word, it needs to be now. It, it's in the dictionary. Now. Yeah. Yeah. What's one of yours? The I would say the, it's not an innate gift. It was a top gift, but like the gift of being able to present, teach complex 
for, you know, big concept information into bite-sized chunk, because um, that's what you have to do in the news. So I would say, like, the fact that I understand, like, I know how to produce stuff. But that wasn't a natural gift. That was like a learned, learned gift. A learned gift. Because I was very shy. Like I wasn't like, like I would be so nervous speaking. I would say my, my speaking skills are a learned gift. Because when I started law school, I said, I never want to be in front of people. I never want to be in court. You wanted to be like a paperwork Yeah, brain. and then I, became, I ended up realizing it was just something I could learn and be good at. And then I was a trial attorney. So then all I did was court in front of people presenting Talking. What do you think is your like innate gift? Like you were just born with it. Oh, I'm a human connector. I from growing up in the family I grew up in, and, and also just having being the youngest with a lot of older siblings who are adults when you're born, you you learn how to connect with people. And also being from a family of drug addicts, like you learn the nuances of how people move through life. You're really good at that. And so I can well, like my gay best friend Daddy always says, like I can connect with a lot of different yeah, yeah, I agree with that's that. That's enough. And I've been like that since I was a little girl. Which one do you like? I would say it's interesting that we're doing this live because it's so easy for me to see them in other people. Mm-hmm. And then when I go, what am I innate? Like, because it's almost like I don't want to give myself credit for an innate gift, but I'll give myself credit for a learned and earned, earned oh, one. Oh, interesting. Right? Yeah. But then when... When I when the tables were turned on me and I'm like my innate gift, my mind goes. It kind of starts going. Well, yeah, I mean you're good at that. You're not that good. You know, it starts like messing with me. I would probably say that people feel very safe and secure with me, and it's clear as fuck. Yeah. And if obviously otherwise you won't. You would. You probably wouldn't feel safe if you crossed me. Totally. But like people instantly. No, like, yeah, it's it's a safe place. Absolutely, if you agree. With I am hundred percent. But there's still a part of me when I just said it where I was like, well, now I'm like, now I sound almighty. No, da, 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 da. see, I get like uncomfortable. What? Tell me an innate gift that I have that you see, and I'll tell you one that you have. Oh my God, you have so many. <laughs> I would say my most treasured innate gift is that you know how to make people feel seen. Mm-hmm. Even if it's a stranger, yeah. it doesn't have to be like someone just that you know well. Uh-huh. And even if someone isn't like, you don't particularly adore them. Yeah. You know, like they don't really read anything on your radar. Yeah. You can still drop in uh-huh. and have them feel totally seen. Okay. If you so choose. Yeah. If you open up that energy. Yeah. I feel seen. You know those people like you can be out with and those friends like and that's very few like almost none where you're out and they you know what each other's thinking. Uh You're that for me. Totally. And it's like (laughs) and it's always great to have validation especially when you're unwell in the mind Uh because it's like am I the only fucking person seeing this? Right. And we just sometimes we're out together and I say to her all the time I can't look at you. Sometimes I can't look at her face because I know we're thinking the same thing. And if I see <laughs> your face, bust out. I'm going to bust out. Bust out. Oh, my God. That's, that, I, that is, that's a gift that comes to my mind. I first. love that. Okay. A gift that I have. Thank you. A gift that I see in you that you have is you are so good if a situation is really heavy. And, like, like I think even at, like, my first case where it's, like, heavy and, like, dark, you're really good at coming in and, like, honoring that it's heavy and dark, and also, like, bringing joy and lightness to it. Like, Interesting. Like, not being stuck in the dark. Like, you'll go there with somebody, and you'll hold space for it, and then you're, like, you say something that just makes everyone laugh. <laughs> and it's like, oh, fuck, like, it doesn't always have to be so serious all the time. And I think that comes from, like, when you have such intense trauma in life, my, me and my siblings say this all the time, you have to laugh about it or you're going to cry about it. This is why comedians are like tortured souls. Totally. Because it's all the trauma. Yeah. What comedian hasn't had addiction, childhood yeah. trauma, whatever. Exactly. And so like in my family, we always say like if we didn't laugh about it, we would be in fetal position crying about it. Absolutely. And I think that that, I view that as a way of transmuting pain. It's actually. Like a help. Do you feel it's a help? I do. I, I do too. I don't, I feel if someone did the 
sarcasm. Different. That's a different deal. That's actually a covert form of abuse. I was gonna so say, in some families. It, it's, and it's bypassing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But there's a way to do it where it's like, one of my shaman friends always says, like, healing doesn't have to always be so dark and heavy. And, like, why did we, where did we pick that up from? It's kind of like having wealth or manifesting yeah. your partner. Like, yeah. we're... But so getting the things we want, we have a, we have assigned to it that it's yeah. got to be hard. It's got to be heavy. Right. I'm going to have to like break into a million pieces. Yeah. Like Humpty Dumpty to be put back uh-huh. together. And some people do. Totally. Some people. And listen, do. I'm not saying like there's not hard moments of the journey, but the whole journey doesn't have to be a valley of tears. It can be no, like, there's people who get stuck in that. But there's people who get stuck Just in like it. a victim getting stuck in a victim yeah. loop. And I think, like, you're really good at when people get in the darkness, you're able to, like, pull them out with lightness and joy. Wow. And trans- I have no darkness. idea I had that gift. Oh, what a great exercise. We should do this at I do. Oh, I love this. this. This would be great. Because a lot of the times people don't the see The innate gift and the, and the learned gift. Yeah. I think this is a podcast episode by itself. I agree. Are five only person that thinks that we're, like, riveting? I think we are. I don't, do you guys think I, I feel like <laughs> if you want more episodes like this, I mean, if we're in the abundance bath right now. If you're not watching this, for sure it's on Project Lee TV on YouTube. Are you putting stuff on YouTube? Yes. yes? Okay. Yes. So it'll be on Regina's YouTube channel as well. That's the only way you're going to be able to watch part one and part two. I don't know. Whichever part you landed on first... Some of you are landing on part two first. Yeah. Just trust that you were supposed to be on part two first. Totally. And this is coming from two Virgos. Totally. I am a front to back reader. Me too. <gasps> People that read the end of the book. <gasps> yes. <laughs> People do this. No. I'm horrified. I'm horrified. My my best friend Kiki. I picture <laughs> she's a back to front. Not you watch a movie with her, you're sitting on the couch with her and she's Googling the ending. To figure because she's like, I like to know where we're going. I don't want to be surprised. She's like, but she's like, my trauma with being surprised by things and I don't want to be. Interesting. No, I still like the element of su- surprise, but not all surprises are good. Okay, let's let's go into, I feel like we need to make sure we cover, what is some shit about like true wealth and success in business and money that... These people are full of shit that are spewing out there. Like, what's the real deal that you feel it, it boils down to? If you're someone who's like, you're someone who would be like listening to this and you're early on in business or you like don't want to be at your corporate job and you really want to do something that you love and you want to start and you want the money and you want the things that all the people have, you want the marriage, you want all this stuff. What's the truth about it? Okay, the first thing that Pink Ninja Team said that was a lot of people online that talk about manifestation and wealth, they give you the illusion that you can sit on your bed in your home, you can listen to manifestation meditations, you can journal about, you can future life journal about all the things you want in the home, and then that's kind of it. And whether it's you want a ton of money, you want the best love, you have to fill avenues for the abundance to flow to you. So, for example, if you want to build a business, you have to build the foundation of the business. So what does that mean? It could be if if you want to build something online, you have to start showing up on social media. You have to start creating content. There has to be an offering that you're selling so that there can be an energetic exchange between your ideas and the people who want access to them. If you want a partner, you can't just sit at home Knitting. <laughs> this is the activity you picked. I had a, I had a, I had a roommate. Of all my, I had a roommate in my twenties who would sit home and quilt, and she desperately wanted to meet a man. And one day I came Honey, home. Honey, the quilts ain't me cutting it. What? The quilts not gonna fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not gonna fuck you. Maybe I'm the quilt. Maybe you know what? I don't want to fuck on a quilt. I'm not. A, I'm not. A, it's, I'm not a quilt girl. Look at thing. And she would sit home and quilt. And I finally said to her, I said, girl, you are not going to meet your husband in our apartment in Philadelphia quilting. you got to get out there. And again, there has to be an avenue for the abundance to flow and love. Even if it's, and I, have, I tell people this, you can make a hinge profile. Make your hinge profile, fill out all the information, 
and you never have to swipe on anyone. But you get to see all the likes that come in. So you get to look through who comes through for you. That's an avenue for abundance to flow through. Yeah. You know, you you live on the beach. You'll go and you'll sit at a bar and you'll have a cocktail and you'll have a dinner. That is an area I see what you're saying. Well, and so like just like having an offer, or it doesn't even have to be an offer yet. Start by building a community and sharing your stuff on social media. It's free. Yeah. So those are avenues. Those They're are not. Avenues. You're not having. You. You're not even having to spend money, and those are avenues. If you could DIY your entire DIY your entire podcast, and that's not totally free, but it's cheap. I mean, maybe a hundred. You could if you did it really cheap. I don't know. Maybe a hundred bucks a month. Yeah. You know, it's like those are all avenues. But like, what happens is people want what they say they want. Yeah. They fantasize about it. They dream about it. They wish for it. They hope for it. They manifest it. But yet you take no real action towards it. Like, I think that's spiritual entitlement. Just sitting back and like. It's just going to come to me. I want it. Like it's, like we said in episode one, part one of this about guys being lazy. This is being spiritually lazy, actually. It's like we have to be an energetic match for what we're calling it. And so. We have to show up in a certain way. We have to be in a certain energy. If you're is it like relationships are an easy thing to, to do this comparison yeah. with. If you're somebody who you want this hot ass man, and you're like, I want a man who's fit, I want a man who's this, I want a man who's that. Okay, are you an energetic match for that? Right. Like, how do you show up? How do you take care of your health? Mm-hmm. How do you live your life? Mm-hmm. Like, I I can't sit back and be like, I want a man who does all these things. And I'm not showing up. And it doesn't have to be like, it doesn't have to be tit for tat. Right, like, not, don't take it so literal. It doesn't have to be so literal, but like, you know, I, like, in my business and life, like, I want a man who's, you know, I, I do want a man who's hot. I do want a man who's fit. I do want a man who's abundant. I want a man who's conscious and who meditates and who does this thing. I have to, I, well, am I going to just sit back and not do those things and expect to be a match for a partner like that? How you can be an energy match for like the partner you want but like what about if it's like the house you want or the money you want yeah and i think the answer to that is the version of you that has that house the version of you that has that money what does she do when she gets up in the morning what's her routine what like how does she do things you know when i think about the highest it doesn't have to be like she wears gucci and i have to buy gucci and she does this no it's like what's her what's her rich bitch routine exactly what's like you know what's even your like your abundance box or the abundance bath which is why we're in this right. like take you don't have to have like all the money you don't no. have to literally be in a five-star hotel no. but i'm at a level where i'm purposely doing this at a certain point yeah. you've got to purposely drink out of like get yourself a pair of like crystal glasses and drink your champagne yeah. out of it, or drink water out of it you know, go, to T- go to TJ Maxx and buy really nice glasses that yeah, they exactly. sell at TJ Maxx. Like, like buy the nicer like mascara or one lip gloss or like you know what or I mean? Or like if that version of you that lives in that beautiful house like smells a certain way, find a fragrance that smells good and that makes you feel And these good. are all like those avenues you're talking about. Like now you've got so many, it literally can't, it's impossible for it to not come in. Right. But you're making it impossible to come in by going, well, I won't do that. Well, I'm not going to do that. Well, I'm scared to do that. Well, I'll do that when. I'll do that later. I'll do that if. Da, 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 da. Yeah. You're just slamming the doors on literally all the shit that you want. I'll do I've that. done it. Okay. I'll do I, that I've done it myself. Even something that I have been thinking about as I'm making more money is like, I always have this idea like, oh, when I make X amount, like when I hit a million then I'll start donating more money to X charity. Why do I have to wait till then? Why don't I donate I'll what you can, what I can a month what now, you can now? Because that version of me, that highest version of me, she's a philanthropist. Philanthropist. Yeah, I'm. I wouldn't have cried. She, she is a philanthropist. She does these things. Well, this version of Rubina is becoming that version and will do things even in a smaller way to emulate that. I love that. That was, I can't wait for you guys to share with us. You can DM us. I'm at Project Mini Tiffany. 
you're Regina A. Lawrence. Yes. We'll have all of the things are in the show notes. They're also in the description on YouTube. And like, take a screenshot, share this episode, share tag, us, tag you us. Have, like, you have to share this with people who you know want like a refreshing take, but from people who have the receipts. You know what I mean? Like someone who, people who have actually been through it, they get it, they know. And I, I, I'll tell you very clearly, a lot of stuff I don't know. And there's a lot yeah. of stuff that I don't. But share this episode and let us know if you want more episodes like this. And let us know locations you would like us to have. Oh, like that's us. such a great idea. Like, we, I would love, like... The abundance you- bath is great, although since we had tech difficulties, both of our feet literally it's the prettiest are like... <laughs> Like, I wish I was getting a pedicure right now. I look down. It's like old I mean, I've weave. been holding my weave for an hour. And then I look down. I saw her foot. I know this isn't good. We How long have we been in here? Hours. We've been in here hours. Full of baby feet. Well, let us know where you think. Get creative with the ideas. And we love you. We love you guys. Bye. Bye.